G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today I've got a super, super creative freestyle kind of project for you all and it is an, it is an applique, so it's a machine applique, it's a mini quilt. Um, it can be made up for so many different things, so many different purposes. I've got mine actually stretched over canvas and I'm going to show you how to do that today. It's going to change your world. Um, it's so good for, for um, mounting your projects um, in all sorts of ways. So I'll walk you through that. You'll need a free pattern and a whole lot of imagination. I've got the free pattern for you. All you need to do is click on that link in the description box below. I'm gonna put it number one in the comments too so it's easy for you to find. When you go to print out your free pattern templates, just make sure that you check that your printer is set in the settings to print at actual size. That way all of your pattern templates will be absolutely spot on. So who's ready to make my mad March hair? Let's get busy. Right, so let's get started on a little, what will we call it, a mini quilt. It could be a wall hanging and I actually, it's an applique really. So it's an applique wall hanging but I've provided it for you in a quilt format. So you can go ahead and make it up as, as a little mini quilt and add your little borders and so on. I'm actually going to be showing you something that I have made for a long time. And um, I yet actually used to make up these beautiful applique canvases, uh, fabric canvases. And all you need to do this, I'm gonna be showing you how to stretch them over is one of these canvases that you can pick up from um, any of your art supply stores or you just your cheap stores um, so your dollar stores they're very very inexpensive and they are just a wrapped canvas with a wooden frame and it's a beautiful way to display your uh, your mini quilts or your appliques so this is what we're going to be doing today i'll also show you how to put it together um, as a mini quilt uh, as well if that's what you prefer to do but this one is 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters or 11.8 inches by 15.8 inches so it's a good size so that's what I'm going to be putting mine on and what we're going to start with is our base fabric so our main fabric I've chosen so this is a little hair in the in the moonlight, we're gonna have the moon up here. Now the piece that you're going to have to cut, if you're making it as a mini quilt, I've got these sizes in your templates as well, but I'll tell you quickly here, the piece you're going to cut is 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters. So that's the perfect size for the little mini quilt. If you want to be mounting it on a canvas like I am, you will need to cut that to 38 centimetres by 48 centimetres. So it's an extra eight centimetres all the way around. So our next step is our, and I've got that lovely, I've got an interface. You definitely need it interfaced, whether you're making it as a quilt or as a canvas. Our next pieces, you'll find your pattern pieces in your templates that look like this and they're for your base. And our little rabbit is going to tuck into the center of those. He will just, uh, sorry, our hair will sit in the center there. Now, these pattern templates that you have, they're cut perfectly to fit your quilt. So if you're making it up as a quilt, you just need to cut these out as they are. If you are going to be making it up as a canvas like I am, you just take your pattern pieces and you just add eight centimeters on each of these two edges it's marked on your template you'll see it there and you just add that extra you can see there that that's what I've done and I'm also going to show you another little trick now these pieces I have fusible uh, webbing on both of them and I've covered the whole pieces now I have my fusible webbing I buy in great big rolls, so it's no problem for me to use a lot of it. If you're wanting to be conservative with the amount of your fusible webbing paper that you're using, you can just apply it along this strip here, this top strip, because what we're going to do is you can see there, it's just a little tricky thing that you can do. First of all, cut out your straight edges and up to the side and across here. And then I pop that 
just on a light source so you can put it up against your window pane and you'll find that you can see actually see through it um, and then you can trace around because we're using this lovely medium sized flower print you can actually trace around some of those flowers that are extending because we want to break up that line a little bit and that's a very easy way to do it you can see and I've, I've done it on both sides and you can see how I've traced it and then I've been able to just go along and with my paper whether you've got just your strip or all over you can easily cut that out so those are my pieces and obviously I have cut them to suit canvas size now whatever you do with this little project however you want it to sit you must cut your pattern pieces in reverse so how however you want your bunny facing cut the pattern pieces in reverse because of obviously we're tracing out on the back of our fabric so just keep that in mind right throughout this project and that applies to these as well so once you have that lovely fabric and I was very happy with this fabric it was exactly what I was looking for so we've got those now our next step is you can see I've got my little sketch of my little hair here my little hair is just going to sit in there in between and we're going to do a whole lot of creative work here and our little moon so you also need your little moon piece and that will be sitting up there that has your fusible webbing applied also and then we have our hair so let's just move these out of the way and we can have a look at these pieces now our little hair is made up of so many pieces and I've made it quite realistic so this whole design is quite realistic and I'm staying with that and the, a whole lot of little pieces that on their own might not make a lot of sense but they do all come together beautifully now what I've done is I've actually numbered them for you so you can your placement is is done by numbers so you'll know which plate which pieces to put on when I'm going to run you through it anyway I, what I've also done on your pattern templates is I have given you the number of the piece and also I've put there whether it's a mid-tone or a dark or a light so it makes it easier for you to choose your fabrics to have the whole thing keep that realistic look um, because there's some definite um, clear colors that we need to use in different places with this one so that it all comes together right and it's very hard to show you here it's easier to do when we're actually putting it all together we've got ear tips up there we've got the center of the ear we've got our eye that's going to go in here and our little center and our little eye spot so it will all come together in the end I promise um, and very easy with that numbered system so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with piece number one now we're going to remove all of these and we're going to and every single one of these pieces has heat and bond applied on the back uh, heat and bond or what I call fusible webbing so you see there so if you're making for a canvas the distance from the base to the base of your hair is nine centimeters and the distance from the side here from this side edge is six centimeters from the side and remember you've cut that one out in reverse because we want this little hair to be looking to the left so nine centimeters from the base six centimeters from the side will position that one absolutely perfectly if you are making it as a mini quilt your positioning is three centimeters from the side and five centimeters from the base so if you're making it as a mini quilt five centimeters from the base and three centimeters from the side and that will position it correctly for yours remember that I've got that extra eight centimeters all the way around anyway all of these numbers 
will be in your pattern templates for you. So what we're going to do now is our very first thing, I'm going to remove that backing paper and I'm going to press my first number one piece in place. I'm going to make my measurements. I'm going to make sure it's in the right place. I'm going to get that pressed on with a hot iron and a protective cloth. So from there we're going to be going ahead and there's a couple of other things we're going to need. So we're going to be adding to our little flowered section with all sorts of little things. This is where it gets really creative. Now I know that most of the, my projects are very, very structured. This one I want you to have a play with. I'm encouraging you to be very creative and we're, we're sort of going for more of a freestyle sort of look here. So you can add whatever works for your floral. So you'll have a different floral fabric to me. And we're going to be adding an assortment of, as I have there, I've got some little flowers. I've got little buttons for centering. I have a couple of hand crocheted flowers, which are going to work well. And I've also got some fussy cut flowers with my visible webbing on the back and I've just cut them from my actual fabric so they're going to help us out too and we're also going to make some little fabric yo-yos in little fabrics that match and they are just plain fabric I'm going to show you how I make if you haven't made a fabric yo-yo before I'm going to show you how to do that and they're going to be going in as well so you can see it's going to be very very mixed media this little design which is one of my favourite things, I have to say. I do love mixed media art. So those are all the pieces we're going to need. And you can add anything you like. I'm also going to be stitching in a few stars in that night sky. So we'll, we'll, we will create as we go along with this one. But your first step is to get that first number one piece pressed into place. So that has our first piece pressed on and you can see that I've used a nice neutral light colour so that it won't interfere with the rest of the colours that we're adding. So our next piece, we're going to do it in pieces here, just a few at a time to show you. But basically I get most of it on before we do any stitching work. So our, this is our number two piece. And you can see that one lines up with the front there. So we're going to press that one in place. Sorry, that was our number three piece. This is our number two piece. I'm not being very helpful, am I? This is our number two piece. Lines up with the back. Number three piece lines up with the front. Then we have number four. which sits just in the center there. The reason for having to do it in a certain order, of course, is that some pieces go over the other pieces. So that is our number four piece. So our number five piece uh, is and you'll find they will Cover those ears. Just make sure everything is lined up. There's additional pieces going on. And our stitching is going to be quite freestyle. So remember that what we're going to be doing with this one, well, I'm going to be doing it mostly on the machine. Now, I don't have, I do actually have a free motion embroidery foot. I'm not going to be using that because I want to show you that you can do this sort of style just with a straight stitch and some of your zigzag stitches. So we've got those ones in place. Once you have that one in place, the ears in place, our next piece is number six. And you can see that that one just lines up with the head and it also covers the base of those ears and these pieces here. So those are the pieces we're going to press on next. And you can do them one at a time. I like to do them one at a time so that nothing slips. 
get those pressed on and I'll show you the next few. So that has our first six pieces on and next we're going to add piece number seven which is our little muzzle section and you can see that that one just lines up with the front of that little face that creates our little center lip and our little chin sits below so that one gets pressed on that's number seven number eight just sits across the top there you can see it just lines up with the top there and you may want to check it with piece number nine which then goes over the top and where that sits just tucks in and just reveals just a little bit of that dark color and it actually just lines up with the top of the head there and it leaves a little section here that's the other side of his head but you can see that it just covers that section so this is why we do it one little piece at a time so we get that exactly in the right place so that's piece number nine and then we have piece number 10 which actually just tucks in with your jagged edge now this one you're going to have to line up so we're just going to line it up it sits about just about a centimeter from that edge there and normally I would go ahead and add my eye pieces here but this time I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to add my next piece which jumps up to 13 and that is our little ear piece which lines up with the top of the ear and then on top of those we have our little 14 ear tip and our little 15 ear tip that covers over that pink so those are our next ones that we get pressed on you can do it and add your little eyes which makes it all in order I'm keeping the eyes off for now because when I'm working on the machine I don't want to be buffing those eyes up um, by going traveling to and fro over there I want to keep that felt nice and crisp now you see that in some of these pieces I've used felt I've used felt because it gives a bit more dimension um, and it makes those areas nice and clear and blocky we're going to be doing a lot of sewing over those but you can do the whole thing in fabric you could do the whole thing in felt um, whatever you like but just remember you can see that those tones all need to be right so that we get all the perspective right so it doesn't matter whether you're making it in greys or browns or even darker just make sure that all the tones are correct and you'll find those as I said all marked on your pattern pieces so I'm going to get those pieces pressed on and I'm going to show you exactly how that looks so those are my next pieces all pressed into place now to give you a more accurate idea of exactly where that piece there goes because it's one of your crucial pieces it is actually from that little point there to the lower edge of that ear is exactly one and a half centimeters and then take your ruler across from the widest point here to the edge here straight across is two and a half centimeters so that will help you position it and get your angles correct there so now that they're all in place now we can start with our with our stitching now of course you can hand stitch any of this that you like you could use a blanket applique stitch around some of those pieces normally I treat some of them with a blanket applique stitch by hand this time I'm going to do the entire thing on the machine um, so that it really gives you an idea it's it's we're going for that sketchy kind of freestyle look so I'm going to use a variety of different colors of threads just to give you an idea I will highlight this front edge here in a lighter color like this one just so that we really see that edge there where we imagine the moonlight would be hitting 
and then I'm going to mark out the ears with a darker thread so that we can really see those and through all of these other little pieces here that's entirely up to you now I will be doing a bit of a zigzag in a lighter color either side of the ear because that can indicate a little bit of fur movement and probably on these edges as well and under here I will use a zigzag and perhaps on some of these edges or you can straight stitch around every piece now the one thing that we do need to do and it will be my first job and that will be I will rule a little line from the point lowest point of that nose to that little apex there to create that little lip line and I will stitch that one in in a dark thread and I will stitch that two times and then we get that lovely definition there so you can go ahead and if you do have a free motion foot this is perfect for uh, that would be perfect for this uh, little project otherwise you can use any of your fancy stitches and you can make it as mixed media as you like so here's where you can can get really really creative so I'm going to go and do my stitching up until this point and then I'm going to be adding my eyes after that so there you can see my first lot of stitching now I've used two stitches just a straight stitch and a zigzag and I'll let you have a good look at that so you can see exactly where I've done both so on the right hand side on these pieces I've done a zigzag it just gives that idea of fur and you can see that you can extend out from your edge there to give it that little broken look on the backs of the ears up there under that chin line and then on these pieces here and that's just it just changes it up and you can see I've used a straight stitch just about everywhere else again creating some little fur lines as I go now you know this is such you can make this so sketchy if you go out of the lines you know no worries akuna matata it is absolutely not a problem go over the line two times if you like make it deliberately sketchy um, your end result will still be just as good so you can see on these pieces I've just done a straight stitch and of course I've stitched in that lip line there so everything is nice and firm and in place and you can see it's all been highlighted so you can see where I've done dark and where I've used lighter stitching but it may be different for your project so the next step is to add our little eye which as I said you could have had on there before but I just prefer to do it to keep all these pieces nice and crisp so this little section on your little pieces you'll have a top uh, marked so you know which way it goes up and this one is just going to sit in here now it does sit right up against that edge there and tip it down so that that little centerpiece is right in the middle there that's the best way for me to show you that positioning and we're going to press that one into place and then our little second little piece a nice warm brown will then go and settle in there and it just leaves a little bit of eye line remaining and we will press that one into place and then you just have your little tiny little pupil and that goes in make sure that that one is actually running nice and straight it's an eclipse it's not a circle and a little bit closer to the top and then we get all of those pressed on now with this one I'm just going to stitch around that dark uh, around that very warm brown area and a little bit of stitching around here and then just uh, a, a tiny circle in black so I'm really going to match up my threads this time and use a straight stitch for all of them so there we go we've got I've stitched around that little dark section and then around that little iris and I haven't stitched that little black circle because I've just gone ahead and added a little pearl bead there that just gives up that gives us that light reflect on the eye um, and just make sure that's pulled in nice and tight and sink that one in that's why the felt is good for these areas it just gives it a more realistic look and I've made just a couple of little hair stitches 
coming out from the nose with my white extra strong thread now you can if you've got a machine or you've got free motion embroidery you can go ahead and stitch through all of these areas you could hand stitch uh, some more fur work up through here I'm just going to leave mine like this and now that I my little hair is all done we're going to go ahead and pop in our our little surrounding flowers so I'm going to put left over right with mine just because I think that's the nicest placement so I'm going to remove my backing paper and simply line that one up over my little hair on that corner the same with the other one if you've only got your fusible webbing along that top edge you might like to press that one into place and then perhaps just stitch along just to keep that all nicely into place mine will be bonded so that will be fine so line those up and press those into place with a hot iron and protective cloth so there you can see I've got my my foliage uh, flowers all there in place now and I've also gone ahead and added my little moon now remember that I'm working on one that is a camp going to be on a canvas so I've got it an eight centimetre uh, uh, sorry a four centimetre fold over on each side we see there so the positioning of my moon will be different if you are working on the mini quilt size then you'll be able to see exactly where your edge is just make sure that it's not too close to the edges because if you're sewing a mini quilt you're going to have to have a seam around that outside so now I'm just going to go and I will just uh, make a straight stitch around my little moon and then I'm just going to stitch the top line here into place of these little pieces here and I will use a thread that will be largely invisible so I will probably go for a deep green just so that it's all matching and uh, just carefully go around each of those pieces I will also mention that I am using a jeans needle for this whole project in my machine now I I usually use a jeans needle all the time because I very rarely sew lighter weight fabrics but a jeans needle will handle this very well and my stitch length um, varies throughout obviously with with all of this but my zigzag never I didn't do anything wider than a four I did go down to a three um, and my stitch length on my straight stitching is a 2.5 and when I want anything that's very closed in, very tight, I just bring it down to a two. So that just gives you an idea. But uh, it, this is really just where you just have a bit of a play. So I'm going to get that, those pieces stitched on. Okay, so now I've got my little moon piece stitched on and also my little flower section stitched into place there. And you can see, you can go ahead and be just, you can go over that a couple of times. So you could use a fancy stitch around the edge of that. It's all good and the same with your moon. You could go around and around and around in swirls with that if you wanted to. I'm just trying to show you on a, on a normal machine with a straight and a zigzag stitch what you can do. So from here we start to look at we're going to be building our little uh, sort of a, a little extra um, layer with all of our flowers and our additional flowers we want to sort of bring up some flowers around this little hair here and we want to add some bits and pieces now you can see that I'm going to be using all sorts of things that I'm going to be stitching on there randomly as I said if we keep it all very mixed media it's very very pretty you can add as much or as little as you like now the little felt the little fabric yo-yos um, are really simple to make so what you start with I've given you the template for the little circle so the little circle makes a little yo-yo flower about this size generally it's about half the size of the circle that's about how it turns out and uh, I've gone around on the right side of the fabric with my extra strong thread and I have sewn a running stitch right the way around the outside and I've come out on the same side there and then all I need to do is pull those gathers in and 
I can tie off that little those two ends together push that one all out flat knock that off about three times and snip those thread ends and that is what you end up with and of course we put a little button in the middle that centers those and so that little seam is hidden it's just a great little embellishment for so many things so I may well bring those up into this background area as well so I'm going to have a look good look at my placement now if you're going to be ironing on some little fussy cut flowers which I'm going to be doing um, just remember that you don't want it all mirrored so you want to keep it unbalanced unbalanced is way more attractive to the eye also remembering that if you're working on a canvas you've got four centimeters all the way around I don't know if I said to you add four centimeters or I may have said add eight to those lower pieces it's actually four anyway it's written on your templates it's eight overall um, but it's four centimeters that you add to each side which means we've got four centimeters to spare that is going to wrap around that canvas so make sure you're not putting anything too close to those sides again if you're working on a mini quilt you've already got your sizing there you can see exactly where your little pieces can go so I'm just going to have a little play with that and add my little bits and pieces um, and you may have all sorts of things that you can add but again it's just about keeping it random and I'm really going to build up on one side and not so much on this side um, but I will press my little fussy cut flowers in place and then I will just stitch with a green back and forth back and forth and create some little stems there and you can have a few stems coming up either side it just breaks up that top edge area so this is where you get to be super creative um, you can add little jewels little beads anything you like so I'm going to have a little play and get those into place okay so let's have a little look how we're going moving along with this little project here so I've laid out all of my little pieces and I've got them all stitched on so I have my independent little flowers there you can see that I've added my little fabric yo-yos I've kept everything random so I've got nothing that's too balanced I've got more on one side than the other and that gives it a nice it's a very attractive look um, you can see I've also added just a few buttons here and there now you may have all sorts of little embellishments little doilies are great you can cut individual flowers out from them you may have things that you've collected over the years that you can just pop on there just remember to avoid your seams don't get too close to your seams and in my case I've left a four centimeter boundary where this one is going to be wrapped so I've then gone ahead and I've used my white gel pen just a tip if you're working on dark fabrics and you want to stitch white a white gel pen is perfect for this and I've marked in a my little stars and I've stitched those in just two times using a white thread now you can also add a little jewel or a little bead to the center of those and again this is just such a freestyle project just put them where you feel they look great but you can have a good look at mine and see how I've done it there so from here if you're making this one up as a mini quilt you would now go ahead and cut your two strips for your top and your bottom and then your strips for the sides and you would stitch those into place you also need to cut a piece of wadding for the back which you can press on um, by a fusible wadding, wadding if you can which is nice and fine and uh, make sure that you cut that just a couple of centimeters smaller than your actual project and then you can cut a back from your template your made template with your sides on and cut your backing fabric and then it's just a matter of sewing all together if you're going to be hanging this little one remember to incorporate some little tabs to hang your your little quilt or your little wall hanging so if you're looking for exactly how I do that I do that in a very simple way have a look at any of my little mini quilt videos and it will show you 
how I finish them off at the end. I'm pretty sure that most of you who are making this as a quilt will probably add your own quilt bindings and of course you can go ahead and do that. You could also turn this into a cushion cover which would be fabulous. Um, but I'm going to now show you my process of wrapping this one around a stretch canvas. I'm going to be using a staple gun and mine is electric so it's very handy but you can use just a manual one. You can actually mount these onto a stretch canvas using hot glue. It takes a little bit longer and you've got to be pretty hands on with it but it definitely can be done. So let's get busy showing you how to wrap a canvas. So the first thing that I do before adding a project to a canvas is I sew a zigzag stitch all around the outside edge. If you have an overlocker you, or a serger you can go ahead and use that. It just gives a lovely finish on the back. And then I also give that project a really good press so it's nice and flat. So then we take our canvas and we make a mark either side as far down as you wish. Make sure it's the same on either side and that's for our cord to go across. We're going to add our little cord to be able to hang this one up. And I'm using Venetian blind cord. You can use anything that you have, um, but I find that little cord is really good and it's really easy to staple in place or hot glue in place. So I've left a little overlap so I can just give that a little curl under. So that's where that one will be. And our next step is to work out our position on our little project. So it's just a matter of laying that one on the back and take your measurements. Make sure that you've got it even all the way around. So once those measurements are all clear and you've got those correct, you can flip one side over. Make sure that you hold on to that. And you've got your first side. So what I like to do then is to add a couple of pins. You'll have to find where the wood isn't, but it does just help hold that first side in place. And then you can flip that one over again. And fold that one up and then we're going to start with our stapling down one side. So I'm going to start with my bottom corner and I've added one staple there. This is very noisy and I'm going to continue on along your pulling it tight is not so important just now two staples at a time that's okay I can tug, tug those out so we're going to go right up to the top edge add as many as you like we really want to secure those corners so once you have one side done we turn it around and the important part now is really stretching, really stretching that project. You can flip it over and check it from the front if you wish. Make sure that all your placement is right and you've got that nice pulled. Now if you've got any rippling here, remember that we're going to do the same thing the other direction. So we're going to pull that in all nice and tight as well. And it's just a matter of doing exactly the same thing and making sure we get those corners also. So let me show you a corner as best I can. I hope you can see that. So we've got our two sides done. Before we pull this section up, we're going to do our nice little tight corners. So what we're going to do is that point there, we want to give that a good pull. So we're gonna pull that over. We want to put our finger on the top there because we want this little section to be nice and flat. Then we're gonna use our thumb to hold that there and we're gonna pull this bottom section up. We want to pull it up so that it is straight. You see that it's straight up against that edge there. 
I hope you can see that. So it's not folded like a present, it's folded nice and flat. And then it's just a matter of tucking in all of those edges and we're going to drop our staples in there. So, so long as you get that nice straight line up the side, you're all good. So once you have your corners boxed in there, you can pull up that lower flap and add your staples here. It takes a little bit of practice, but after a while it will, it will seem absolutely simple. And now we're just going to repeat with that lower edge. We're going to box our corners in first, and then before we pull the pull, before we staple, we're going to really pull this top one taut because that's our last stretch, and then staple those in place. So there we go. I have all of my all of my sides stapled down. I've got my corners nicely boxed, and I've just added my little tuck those little ends into underneath those flaps and folded those edges over it gives you a firmer hold throw quite a few staples there and you're all set it really is that simple what i think i might do is i might actually create a very quick little video for you all um, on a smaller canvas and uh, with more of an overlap so you can really get an idea of it i'll do that as quickly as i can but that should give you a very clear idea and it is very simple. If you're feeling unsure about the wrapping, you can always add extra to your the start of your project so that you've got more to play with. So it's something I'm used to doing. So, um, but, so that's it and we've got it all pulled nice and taut and you can see the end result is absolutely gorgeous. What I love about this look is that it has that seamless going off the edge look. Um, and it's really quite a lovely project. So I hope you're going to be all very, very creative with it. I can't wait to see where you put this and what you do with it. And I think, it, think sometimes it's fun just to do something where you really do just kind of fly by the seat of your pants. And uh, this is definitely one of those projects. Um, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. Well, thank you all for joining me with this one today. I really liked the break. It felt like a break for me because it's so not structured. I do love my structure. I think you all know that about me, but it is nice to just sit down to something and have a real genuine play with fabric and notions and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. Um, I have so many more things planned for this. I'm going to do a quick little video for you all to really show you that canvas wrapping. I'll do it on a smaller canvas so it's a bit easier for you to follow. Um, and because uh, I have so many things planned for this style. So I hope you all stay with me for that. Make sure that you're following me on Instagram and you won't miss out on any of the new designs you'll be able to see. I try and keep you updated on my stories about the next projects coming up and, uh, and keep sending me pictures of your beautiful finished projects. I'm absolutely loving it. A couple of you are just absolutely churning them out. <laughs> it's just incredible. I'm having to play catch up actually. So I think I'm pretty quick, but never mind. Um, you're showing me up everybody. So, but I'm loving it. So I love to see you spin on this. I'm dying to see what you're going to do with this one. Mini quilts, all sorts of things. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Um, so send me those pictures and uh, I will pin them and share them with everybody. So most of all, everyone, keep staying positive, keep staying creative. And, uh, and when something wonderful comes to you in your day, don't just keep it for yourself. Make sure that you share it. Make sure that you pay it forward. Until next time, it's Uru from me.